Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Got to put the phone on Dungeons and Dragons. Got to. Mm hmm. Yes, Jamaican air horn. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do hey. this to me? Because <laughs> it's an inconsistent podcast. Stanky leg, do the stanky leg, do the stanky leg, bitch, I water. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, this is from Dallas. Yeah. Yes, this is my, these are my people. Yeah. Do the stanky leg. Do the stanky leg. Yo, I miss that time. We had dances, you know what I we mean? We had dances. We had instructions. Mm-hmm. Now you got to mm-hmm. get on TikTok and you got to learn like right. an Alvin Ailey routine. That's not fair. When the when we saw people doing the booty do, it was just kind of <laughs> like, all right, all right. Don't come from my city, okay? Something different is happening over there. <laughs> over there. You know, like that was our yeah. version of the mullet. It was the booty do. Okay. Yeah. Wait, is that what that means? So there's two meanings to booty do. It used to be like your, what? So the booty do it can either be a haircut where it's like a low fade, and then they let the hair grow out in the back, and that's the booty do where it's like Wait. a fro in the back. The shag is the booty do. Yeah, but it looks more like it's like circular like it's 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 pretty big it's so not like it's a rat really tail. like a like a a puff but in the back but it's not like you can't put it but in a ponytail it don't have a it's just like if you had a little baby fro in the back and a little you, butt you had no a fade. crack am i ashy oh my god a little butt no crack in the back yes exactly and then the okay. other thing booty do is like if your stomach stick out more than your booty do Okay. I was, when I was a kid, and we don't fashion. Shout, shame, shout but out that to, was just what to they would uh, say. Nard Holston. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think it meant? Um, I thought it was the dance that dudes was doing to the stanky leg that hit the booty do, and then they would be like <laughs> doing like a little. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was back in the day when people danced in clubs, like mm-hmm, where your homeboys mm-hmm. would like hold you up while somebody was dancing real hard on you. Just, right, right. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we've lost that community. We've lost that. Mm-hmm. And now no one dances with strangers anymore. No, we don't live in a in that kind of world. And even in a fun way, like not even in a like like courtship type of way, just in a like, hey, I'm just out here boogieing and other people I don't know are boogieing around me. I mean, I will say the last time I danced with a stranger was at a salsa club. And that's okay. like a different vibe. Because then it's okay. like, you know, if they got the moves, right. I'm coming in with my cha-cha. You know, like, that's more. Yeah. Fun. But, like, at a club. But first of all, L.A. Dances clubs. Dances that require partners. L.A. clubs are for um, professionals. Like, people who go in those clubs, <laughs> it's a whole, like, professional movement. Like, no one's dancing. Everybody's mm-hmm. trying to find the person buying the most bottles. Like, who is most frivolous with their money and has a lot of it right now? And how can I get my hands on it? Um, it's, Dang. It's, yeah, it's like a social club. That it's not, sounds like a like a sad game. Yeah. I mean, it can be exciting for people. I guess. I, if you can <laughs> afford to play, sure. But if not, then it's just like... I don't know. I like to just have a good time to music. Where we can I to do the club that? Together. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like, I think we danced, not us together, but we were yeah. dancing. Yeah, like, people yeah. Were people were dancing. People were dancing. Right, right, right. Yeah, but we, yeah. but you know, we didn't even dance with people we knew. We just danced alone. But we mm-hmm, were dancing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Heck yeah. But remember everybody else in that section? They were just sitting. And then they, they got their sitting. alcohol and they disappeared into the it's ether. It's like, you know, like like sometimes there's like, like Chuck E. Cheese when you were a kid. Everyone like had sat at the table with everyone they knew. Mm-hmm. But like we're adults. We're not at Chuck E. Cheese anymore. We could like mix it up. Like I went to D.C. one time. I went to this place and there, everybody had a table. Everyone mm-hmm. there had a table and it was like. Th- this is restaurant stuff. <laughs> restaurant. This is not party stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like Luther said, pull back the rug, everybody. Move all the tables and chairs. We're going to have us a party. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all out here smoking hookah and sitting down and watching boxing at different angles. And yeah. it's like, bro, the music's playing. 
at least Atlanta's honest about it. Now, if you go to an Atlanta restaurant, um, it'll be... A, I went to a restaurant with uh, Lil Rel and some people. We were working on a movie. And... Um, <laughs> And we got there. We sat down. There was a step and repeat. This is a restaurant. There was a step okay, and repeat where you could take photos. But just in case, you need to take a photo. <laughs> there was like, the menu was like steak or whatever, whatever. But then they would come over and be like, oh, do you want some hookah with your steak? And I'm like, why would I want watermelon mint hookah with with a, with a eight because ounce sirloin? You, you what you are we doing? You might smoke it. Smoke it a little bit. What like, are we doing? What if the chef was like, I made this to be charred lightly by the hookah in your mouth? <laughs> And so it's undercooked. Don't give them ideas. It's undercooked. If you don't, if you everything. don't smoke hookah with the steak, you you might be in trouble. It uh, might be too no. bloody. You need that last bit of hookah smoke. No, to give no it ma'am. that crisp. <laughs> to give it that crisp. <laughs> Do you know actually the reason that a lot of black people like their meat well done is because it actually everything goes back to slavery, oppression, always. Right. So like back in the day, like it's the same thing with vanilla ice cream. Like black people couldn't they wouldn't let us buy vanilla ice cream. So that's why your granny favorite ice cream is uh butter pecan. And like the same thing with steak, like they the meat people would sell black folks like less quality meat. Mm-hmm. So in order to make sure nobody got sick, they would cook it all the way through. Mm. So that's like what part of that cultural thing like stems from. But I like a medium rare because I'm bougie. And I'm not okay. going to suck a hookah with it. I'm not sucking a hookah and eating a steak. <laughs> that is ridiculous. And that wasn't even all. So then we got there like 8. Okay. So around like 8.30, the lights start to dim. Then there's like a disco ball and lots of flashing lights and a DJ. And we were like, "Is this is a restaurant, right? And no one's dancing. It's just right. for some reason it's right. also a club. Yeah. Yeah, the clubs are sad now. I saw a blueprint in Miami of one. It was all tables everywhere. I mean, I guess it's cool to, like, like if you sit with people you don't know that well, then there's music playing, and it's like, oh, I didn't even have to talk to that person, you know? I guess. But the but- music isn't, like sensual we used to have some like art like usher used to play in the club now it's yeah. all just like either you know female rap is like get these niggas money and stab their friends it's like you can't really make eyes <laughs> to someone to that song <laughs> our eyes locked when, right. when she says stab them <laughs> no <Yeah>. it's not <laughs> yeah it's not a romantic place anymore yeah but it's just also just i don't know i think i think part of it is everybody's holding their phones Mm -hmm. everybody's texting used to be you were more immersed in the music you was more uh, immersed in the in the scenario that you were in because you couldn't leave like mentally a lot of people are like what do you mean you couldn't leave it was a hostage you couldn't no you mentally couldn't oh like so like distract yourself yeah if the thong song is playing everybody's like laughing and giggling like remember this oh that was crazy hitting the notes because you know that's all that's going on you can't be on instagram you can't be online you can't you know I mean, I'm glad that, like, obviously, we're young, so we had phones when we were kids, but... But they didn't do much. But people weren't... Those phones didn't do much. Okay, you I had, would You would get five iPhone. texts from Facebook <laughs> that would be like, hey, so-and-so liked your status, and it's like, all right, when I get to a computer, I'll see that. <laughs> Thank Still, you. like, in beeper mode a little yeah, bit. Facebook yeah. was, like, the first pager, modern yeah. pager. It's like, yeah, but we, we had phones. I mean, I had iPhones and stuff, like, when when I was, you know in high school and college and whatever and i remember okay. still going to like parties in college and you know it's sweaty everyone's sweat everyone's dancing people getting picked up and thrown but it's all fun and mm-hmm. there's not somebody standing in the corner trying to put you on tiktok and go viral right 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 i didn't even think about the 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 people standing by that could post stuff and yeah and that's what everybody for some reason wants clout i'm like if you knew how hard it was to like actually have to engage in your social media all the time you would not want this as a job it is terrible and so i don't understand what people's obsession is now everyday people with Mm -hmm. like chasing this kind of clout and virality like when i see nurses you remember the nurses who got fired uh this was like maybe like six months ago they got fired because they were maternity nurses and they were in their uniforms at the right, hospital right, talking right, about right. all the pregnant women that get on their nerves and what they do. They're like, here's the thing that get on my nerves about Shelly. Shelly laying in the bed dying right here. Like, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? I get, right. it, I get it. Have social media. But why are you at work trying to go viral? And they lost their jobs. Right. Because it's like if you made a video like that and it was only for the group chats, kind of lit. It's mm-hmm. kind of lit. 
because you all right we know this is inappropriate but right we you know what i'm saying we like we still have a sense of humor we know you know we really work hard but we had a little time to do something fun on our like downtime right yeah but to put it out for the world is like i'm trying to catch one like you've lost your mind yeah. like where is your mind please go find it okay like, we got a search party for your mind if this hits people right i'm out of here <laughs> like, you know what I, i'm saying i would have thought oh you was trying you was trying to go viral you was trying to get out of here get out of here <laughs> so you just didn't want to be a nurse yeah anymore, you didn't want to be saying. a nurse because I don't want to see, I don't want to see that. It's just, it's right. very weird to me. And I think it's sad that everyone's so focused on taking a video of everything. Like, even concerts. I go mm-hmm. to a concert, everyone has their phone out. I'm like, baby girl, we're all here. If you don't get the video somebody else did, they have professional videographers. Why don't you right. just look at it with your eyeballs, my G? Now I get it, like, I take a little, listen, when I was at Beyonce, like, you know I had to give me a little snippet. Right. You know, but but I had my phone down. I was on Mushrooms, and I was just enjoying the concert, floating I... around. Didn't know Beyonce was also filming it. Oh yeah, I, I was wouldn't the have. I wouldn't have filmed as much had I known that like she had hired professionals and told them what lens to use. I wouldn't have like I would have only gotten so you thought you were myself. taking personal footage for to send to Beyonce. You was, was gonna mail like, it to her. I can't <laughs> consume all of this at once. I need to record some things so I can process them. There's a lot of images coming at me, a, a lot, lot of outfits coming at me, a lot of song, you know, combinations that I didn't see coming. It was a lot for me. I just needed to, some documentation so I could get it together and figure out, <laughs> like, everything that I saw. So you, you could know? review the tapes. Yeah, like I athlete, just wanted to, to review the play. tapes because I know everything. I wasn't able to to just take it all in, right? But had I known that she was, she also knew that and was doing that, I would have just took videos of myself enjoying, enjoying the, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, also like online, Rob, everybody's posting. Because all the concerts right. had little different things, little different outfits. I muted all of that. <laughs> I muted all of that. I was like, I want to be surprised. Okay, you guys are in Europe. I'll put it in a in a folder and I'll get to it later. But I want to be surprised. So every time, every Blue Ivy, nope, nope, you know, like I'm, I might be messing up the algorithm of the tour because they're like, he's really not interested in this. <laughs> but I'm also save. I'm like, save, get out of here. Save, get out of here. And I'm like, I will get to that later. But the saving is engagement. That's why they're going to keep putting it on your page. Also, that's what I was saying is like you can go back after you watch the concert and go look at all the stuff and you're going right. to see stuff you didn't see. I was actually right. in the Beyonce movie. I saw myself. Really? Mm-hmm. I could only see. Okay, so everyone had these silver hats. I got one in Jersey. But then okay. I went to see her in L.A. too. And mm-hmm. I would in L.A. I got like I went Beehive A. Like I wanted to be right next to the stage. Yeah. So it was me and JoJo. OK. And um, we were front like front center. So when she brings out uh, Diana Ross, mm-hmm. there's only one person with a silver cowboy hat in Beehive A. And it was me. And so Ooh. I'm right next to the stage. I was like, that's me. I'm the visuals, baby. Oh, wow. So, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. But I mean, she. I got scammed. Ticketmaster counter days because I will be showing Ooh. up when they get you when they get you at Congress and you do your hearing, your Mark Zuckerberg like Senate hearing. I will be there with the neck brace and a cane, and I want my ducats because okay. y'all scammed the hell out of me. Wow, what did they do? Um, so I bought my B day tickets day of on a flight back from um a wedding in Detroit. Okay, okay, and so. I was trying to buy them on Ticketmaster, and they mm-hmm. were cheaper. And they kept saying the tickets weren't available, but they were advertising them on the website. So I thought maybe it's because I'm on a plane or something yeah. like that. And then I was like, all right, fuck it. So I go to tickets.sale. Now, I vetted this website. It's legit. I looked up reviews. I okay. looked up a bunch of stuff beforehand, right, before engaging. I see the same tickets. Is there anything after sale? Is it ticket.sale.com, or is dot .sale just like a new one? I feel like it was just tickets.sale, but... <laughs> You know, that sounds a little fishy. I looked it up. Sale. I am the scam guy. Normally I they it up. got three letters. But here's okay. Org. So the net, site was legit. Rob. Gov, it sale. wasn't that. It was that the tickets were more expensive there. But I put in two tickets, right? And right. so I got the section. It was showing me the price of one ticket until I purchased it, and then it doubled, and then they added taxes to it. It was already an expensive. Did it say ticket. EA? No. 
because I'm used to an EA. Normally, they show you tickets like for one nowadays, which makes no sense to me. Like it's I put in two tickets, so they need to be next to each other. So they're showing me the ticket like where they are, right? Yeah. And then not until I hit pay did it double the price. It didn't double the price. You bought two. They gave you the price for one. But what I'm saying is, you said I want two of those. That's not ethical. (laughs) Because like when you're paying for something, you see the full price before you hit pay. What in what world, Rob? Oh wait, you paid and then you saw the two, and then they doubled the price. It's not like I, it was it something wasn't in where your it was said times like, two no. and then the final price is at the bottom and then you hit pay. That's ethically what's supposed to happen. Right. But it just said the price of one but two tickets was next to it. And then it doubled as soon as I hit pay. Now, I'm on a plane, so right. I can't call to like cancel this as a day of so I'm talking to customer service they don't want to give it my money back because also Ticketmaster lets you like the way they tax things is like their fee is based on how much you pay right taxes right. that makes sense but their fee what do you mean the transaction fee is more because my ticket is more expensive did it cost more to do the transaction on my ticket than it did the nosebleeds like be serious like it's insane so they weren't going to give me my money back but um it was crazy i will never say the number but um it was absolutely insane so yeah ticket mass- oh and then this was a crazy part so i get it from tickets i sell right it's mm-hmm. not coming so i'm like oh this is a scam i get an email from Ticketmaster. so i'm like oh the tickets i still wanted are available i'm like i don't want these tickets from tickets i sell like take this shit back fuck this so why when i find Finally, open the Ticketmaster email. It's the tickets from tickets that sale. Mm. Ticketmaster is just using third parties. They're like criminals. Like I want them real bad. Okay. They're ruining everything. Like we used to be able to enjoy going to a concert. Hey. Why is the artist selling the ticket for sixty five and then I go on Ticketmaster and now it's nine hundred? What? Yeah. I I feel you. They you know. They in bed with a lot of people that, that you know, make a lot of things happen. Yeah. And I They're feel like that's part of the problem, too. You know, it's a, it's a lot going on with that. They got venues over there. They got, you know, it's they the got mob. everything. They got everything going on at the same time. They ain't put master in the name for nothing. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right. Speaking of scam, <laughs> we got the host of the Scam Goddess podcast here, Lacey Mosley. Wow, how we're seventeen minutes and you have not said my name, Rob. <laughs> I did. I did early. I did feel you? like I did early. I don't think so. But like, like the <laughs> stanky like... leg was playing. So yeah, it was we your definitely... name? Your name was said while stanky leg was playing, mm. which is which is pretty distracting. But yeah. A black lady sketch show, I Carly. You let it make air horn. I, I do, it. I do. Well, one of my sounds went away, and I don't know what happened, but I guess yeah, I lost the license to that sound, and now I got to replace it. But Damn, haven't replaced it. What was it? Can you do it with your mouth? It was like hey, <laughs> but it was like a bunch of people at once, like a like a little Johnny sounding hey. Ooh. Yeah, he probably sued. That's probably Lil John that suit. Yeah, yeah. You think Lil John that petty? He's checking on everything. I don't think Lil John is that petty. I think Lil John was there and got the guys to say hey at one time and remembers that and is like I remember trying to get everybody to say hey at once. It took a lot of takes. It took time and effort and, you know, convincing people that I'm not we're not gonna make any money off of this. Just say hey, you know. And so, yeah, those guys want to be compensated. They're always like, hey, I I listen to this like, podcast. Hey. <laughs> they put hey while comedians are just trying to think. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> so now they're coming for theirs. It's like a class mm-hmm, action. Mm-hmm. That's what I want for Ticketmaster. Whoever made that horn, they coming next. <laughs> oh, the Jamaicans know that horn belongs <laughs> to all of us. <laughs> it belongs to us all now. <laughs> Lacey, you are from Dallas. Yes. Frisco specifically, but I say Frisco. Dallas because it's just easier to put on a map. No, like you, you can be as specific or as not specific as you want. Well, the Cowboy be. Stadium is up there now, so now I'd be saying that. I'm like the Cowboy Stadium is there. Frisco. Okay, okay, Jerry World. Yes. Oh God, please don't call it Jerry World. <laughs> <laughs> I just lost so many rights when you said that. Oh no, my no. goodness! You know they, you know they got him in them civil rights three thousands. They got him in four K <laughs> on the wrong side of civil rights. Yo, who who figured that out? Who, I don't know, but who we're is mad at that them. into like Jerry Jones? They know what he looks like as a kid. 
He's got a very distinctive face. <laughs> he got a facelift when I was eight, and that joint just settled in. Like, he's not going anywhere. Like, the end of the world is going to be the cockroaches and Jerry Jones, and you know. Was somebody looking up everybody in the photo, and then they were like, oh, we got one? Or, like, <laughs> what, what, did they only, like, see it and they're like, man, that kid looks like Jerry Jones. And then they, like, looked at his age and looked at I feel date. like they had to have been in some kind of civil rights archive. That could have just been on the internet. I feel like they went to one of them places where they had a books where you got to put the gloves on. Yeah, and they were yeah. just like really looking for this. I think a big anniversary was coming with a five or a zero. And they, you know, they bust the picture out every every mm-hmm. five years. And then, yeah. It and was, they were it like, was Jay, Or maybe they always knew. Maybe they always like, maybe they talked about. Like, maybe his friends in high school was like, hey, remember when they integrated schools and you were in the front row? <laughs> My mom still has the newspaper. You remember that, Jerry? He's like, shut up. Now, you know Jerry Friends is long <laughs> gone. Those people are gone. In, by the time he was in high school? I'm talking about 10 years later. Oh, okay. I'm talking about Jerry his age now. This came out, like, a few years ago. He's right. been old. But the picture was, yeah, that was available school, yeah. when he was a kid. So there might have been some kids, like, when he was in high school, like, Jerry, remember when you were in the newspaper? (laughs) (laughs) But I'm saying those friends have probably gone on to, I'm not going to say glory, because I don't think that's where they're going. But, you know, they they done met Sky Daddy, at least for an audit. Um, They're gone. If you were in the picture of them integrating (laughs) the schools in Arkansas in 1957, email the podcast okay we'll send you a special <laughs> gift if you're listening right now and you was there either an integrator or a, a instigator whichever one you were email us we'll send you a package a package that sounds like a threat i hope it is you know no. Ruby Bridges has instagram so it's not that long ago i'm saying i'm saying we'll give them like a like hey you know uh shout out to you for still being alive <laughs> You know, because, yeah, that, that's how this whole thing stemmed from. Truly. But I think we all knew in our hearts that Jerry was there. We just didn't want to publicize. Like, we nobody ever thought Jerry was not a racist. I'm from Texas. Like, come on now. Some of my, right. some of my best white friends were racist growing up. Like, what do you mean? That was just their one good Negro. That was just what you had to, like, deal with until you could move. <laughs> but he was just trying to see. How do you know he was like, I can't believe this. I got to see it with my own eyes. I not... Not my community. Well, they're fo- hey, <laughs> no, get out the way. I'm trying to see this for myself. He was, I can't believe you guys. No, he was on the whites only side <laughs> and their football coach had told them not to go. So he was also disobeying orders from the football coach of like not to be involved in the protest whatsoever. Got you. So he was Got really you. passionate about racism. Yeah. You know, he stood on, so on, this, on racism. That's, that's racism over football. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> come on now. So, like, your football coach says don't go, and you're like, don't worry, I'm going to own a team one day. I'm, I'm about to go look at this. Right. Yeah. Lacey, are, are you trying to get in trouble? What do you mean? I don't know. I feel like like <laughs> you're coming in hot. What about you? Hot and spicy. Ticketmaster. Oh. <laughs> Jerry Jones. You're just taking people down left and right. <laughs> Those people took themselves down. Okay, it's all online. You can look at all yeah, of it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's I'm true. bookmarking stuff because I want to do an episode about Ticketmaster. I just need enough, like adjudicated facts. So. I got you. I got you. But then, when, when it's time for you to sell tickets, what are you gonna do? I'm a live nation. <laughs> Cut that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> they went Ticketmaster. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord all right Listen, well uh, hey. okay i uh, the coke brothers made every waka k zipper it's i'm wearing one right now it's not Wait, my fault what yes waka k on your zipper that's coke brothers no yes. is this everything real? is a scam everything is a scam that's why you no. should rob whenever you can because you're getting robbed every day well who made the riri zipper i don't know who made that okay all right <laughs> It was popular, of course. I I thought maybe (laughs) if you knew that YKK had some problematic things, you might be like, well, maybe I'll find out another zipper that I could I rock am with. not about to start locally sourcing zippers. That is too much okay. work for me. I'm All a right. black woman in America. I can't add that to my plate. I got you. Okay. And sometimes I'm gay. It's so hard. It's so hard already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you.
What is that horn for? What was that one for specifically? The horn is just for the feeling. I felt like it was time for a horn. <laughs> felt like a good horn time. Lacey, what's right. your favorite color sky? Color sky? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I love like a sorbet sky. Sorbet. Yeah, like you know, like like a sherbet, like mm-hmm, where it would be mm-hmm. like the orange and like the purple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that's my favorite kind of sky. Dope, dope, dope. Sunsetty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it's magic hour. Great lighting. Mm-hmm, with photos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Those are my favorites. Whenever we get those, blue skies are fine. But like, if you know, I like a little a, cl- a cute cloud. I can imagine a face on or something. But like a sunset okay. sky, that's just very sexy. When you put a face on a cloud, are you trying to shape the cloud into the face? Or are you trying to find a face that like corresponds with the cloud? I try to let the clouds be what they are. I'm not trying to, because then what's the fun in that? If I'm trying to manipulate the cloud to look like somebody. I don't know. It's like when people get the toast and they'd be like, this look like Jesus. It's like, did it? <laughs> but I'm saying like, if what if you got the ingredients to make something and you're like, I'll just take a little cloud from here, cloud from there, boop, boop, boop. Then that's not a cloud. That's, okay. That defeats the whole purpose. You're supposed to be like, oh, that looks like a dog. Mm. It looks like a dog. Okay, okay. So Not we're like taking the, like the shape Sherman, of the class. You said a face, so I was just wondering, but <laughs> but it's also it could be it could be a dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you like cloud do you like looking at the sky? Uh I look at the I look at the sky. I like it when it's interesting. You know, it's not always interesting, but sometimes it, it, it captures my interest. What's an interesting sky for you? Uh sometimes colors, sometimes it's like some kind of pattern. Uh Every now and then I'll see two rainbows and I'm like, mm. is that my eyes like reflecting the light or is that, <laughs> like, or is it real? does everybody see two rainbows? Or am I having a stroke? Yeah. What, what is going on? But yeah, I've been, I've been seeing two rainbows a lot. That might be good. That might be, you know, like some money, some prosperity. Yeah. Or I'm far. I'm at the other side. Cause like what's, there's, there's money on one side, but then what's on the other side? A cloud. Yeah, it's just an empty cloud. So I might be the <laughs> furthest from the money. I might, cause I and you know what? I don't never see no full bow. What you've only seen like part of bow? I've mm-hmm. only seen part of bow. Okay, see, I know I've seen the rainbow. I've seen the whole like skills. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. A lot. Where okay. do you live? That you can't see the full bow? Are you like looking up from like a basement window or like? Normally, I'm driving. Okay. Normally I'm driving. Well, probably because you're focusing on the road too. I hope. Right. I can't. I couldn't follow a bow, but I think I would know if I was like un- underneath a bow. Maybe you're always underneath the bow. Isn't that great? Isn't that beautiful? Okay. The like over you. Mm. <laughs> this was like a high conversation. Now. As like a concept, or is like you know, just like yeah, I got you. Wow, you really felt that. I did. I did. Um, if you could live in any time, what time would you live in? The future. Like, okay. We all know that joke. I'm black. Like, what time? What other time would I want to live in the present? You might That's have a specific got. time that was like, all right, that, that was, was good okay. for us. Yeah. Better yeah. than now. When LL Cool J put one pants leg up, maybe I wanted to like experience more of the world. With one pants leg up, one pants leg down. If I had been LL Cool J, then maybe. You know what I mean? Right. Like, if I could have worn a Band-Aid on one eye like Nelly, then perhaps. If I Who's were stopping people, you? Nobody's stopping you. If nobody you wanna, needs to. Nobody no. needs to stop that. We all know better. But I love that, like, those kind of gimmicks were just, we ate that up. Like, I we miss gimmicks like that. Like, nobody, yeah. you know, yeah, even, like, Lady Gaga was doing camp. She was wearing meat. She was giving us, Come on. you know, culture. Come on. And nowadays, what, we get a TikTok dance? Like, yeah. the best, like, the high-end version of Shein they got on. Like, we don't, they don't give us any signature anymore. Come on. There's no artist development. They just putting these girls up here on stage in their pajama pants. They was wearing in high school the day before, eating hot Cheetos in the uh, cafeteria at 8 a.m. This is a very specific imagery i'm going for but they can develop in front of us if they want to for sure and i think like everyone has room for growth especially in artistry i feel like that's what's exciting is if somebody doesn't stay the same Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like y'all y'all couldn't get some two steps together before you put her out here at coachella like i feel like we could there's a step in between (laughs) sure but 
part of the problem is Coachella wants to be cool. Coachella wants to have the latest person. Coachella wants, you know, to be like, oh, we had so and so first. So that's that's part of the problem. I mean, they got some days to rehearse in between. I feel like we could get something together. A little two step, yeah. a little eight count. Back in the day, the girls used to really rehearse. That's how I learned about like singing and running on the treadmill, and that's how you build like your voice stamina. Yeah. So that you can move and sing and not be out of breath. Do you do that? I used to, and I'm about to start again. I actually have a voice lesson after this. Okay. Yeah. Were you a Were you a theater kid? You know it. I have huge theater kid energy, Rob. You know okay. It. I mean, yeah, because you're like that. <sighs> like they say about singing and running on the treadmill, and yeah, I I didn't I didn't hear about that. <laughs> you didn't hear about I didn't hear about. I've been on many a treadmill, and no one's ever been like, "No, you got it. You got to start singing, bro." Yeah, it's a it's a workout because it's an anaerobic workout. You have to really like harness your lungs, and like also you have to be in great shape. So I love yeah. stuff like that. They say Outkast used to rap and run around the track. That makes sense to me. So I guess it's the same thing that we're getting them ready to like be performers and have breath control and stuff. And I love them. They're great. I've met mm-hmm. Big Boy a few times, and every time he was always so nice. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Sir Lucius Left Foot. Yes, mm-hmm, an icon. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm taking on your energy now, Rob. I'm like, yes, an icon. Like, I came in, like, so keyed up. And now <laughs> I'm like, yes. I don't know. Uh, you know, whatever. all energies are welcome no, like at it. the Inconsistent Podcast <laughs> with Rob Hayes. Um. So how long you been in LA? I've been here for seven years. Okay. Mm-hmm. What um what was it like when you when you moved here? What was like? Oh, I mean, it was trash. I got yeah. told like twelve times in one year. Um, because I had totaled, told. Oh, told. 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 No, 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 no. Told. Told. Yeah. Yeah, they were replaying my shit like every other day. Jeez. Because uh, I was like waiting tables, and then I would do like comedy at night and stuff, mm-hmm. and then like I would have to move my car at six a.m. So sometimes I would oversleep, or like the alarm wouldn't go off or something, and then you know I get out there and my shit is gone. How do you? So how does it work? Do you like how do you find the sign? Because I see the sign sometimes. If your car is towed, call this number. Mm-hmm. Like, how long does it take you to find the sign? Oh, it's usually very close. I've only had to call the sign once because after that, I knew where my car was. It was at Hollywood Tow. It was $283. And if I didn't get it the same day, they added $40 a day. And they knew me. They would just pull up my file. So they knew you. Yeah. Ah, that puts a target on you. No, I don't think so. I think so. If <laughs> they're the like, toe, if they're like, she always pays, she always get it out. <laughs> you know what? We having a slow night. Go check if that car over there. <laughs> Go check if that car is by the red. You know, she don't even care no more. <laughs> she in the intersection. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, go over there and get that. I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Yo, what, if, what if they were always looking right. for me? Right. Because I live there. She come there. in. She got, a, she got a designer bag. She out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, she I get did the not car, have designer bags. Then. She I get gave the them car right out. With. You know, like the money be in her hand, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I never thought about it like that. No, yeah. I did not have That's it like what that I would day. do if I was a touch. If I saw you a couple times, I'd be like, all right. Well, the people who What time the she get off? <laughs> <laughs> she probably she probably leave something, go back and get it. You know what I'm saying? We'll we'll give her a couple more hours. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, I never thought about it like that. No. <laughs> Because it was a lady at the desk. It's like people who work at the Hollywood tow. They don't go get the cars and then hop behind the desk, right? Right, right, right. They have the two right. different people. But those tow trucks are petty as hell. They they always wait in the same parking lots for like a 3 o'clock tow. Like there's certain times where yeah. they can get them off the street. But I also learned if you get in your car, they can't tow it while you're inside. So they'll try to make you get out, but eventually they'll give up. Mm. Yeah, just get in. Have you done that before? <laughs> have you gotten in the car? No. No? So how do you know it works? <laughs> I do. It's the law. You can't tow a car with someone inside. It's a liability. What if they start towing and then you get in? Then they can't keep going. Mm. Well, I'm saying if you see your car getting towed, if you still got the keys, get the burp, burp, hop inside and just lock okay. the doors and, and pretend you don't hear anything. Just stay in there. They will leave eventually. What, they, what, they gonna what if you run out of gas? The car isn't on when you get towed. Then you're like, all right, I need to, the I need to get it towed anyway. Hey, take. Can you take me to the gas station? <laughs> if you run out of gas, then you just get... Rob, that doesn't make sense. Cause when cars get towed, you think they turn them on? They don't have the keys. Right, but you're in the car. Yeah, so why would I turn the car on while I'm getting towed? I'm just going to sit in the car, Rob. Right? You're going to sit in the car? Well, if it's cold outside slash hot outside. Then I'm just be sitting... What, what do you want more, to be cool or to have your car? 
You want to be warm or you want to have a car? I feel like if I turn the car on now, I'm more of a threat to the tow truck situation. For sure. Because if the car is like already like up on the jack and now it's like busting exhaust out. Of the, yeah, 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 yeah. You taking it up a notch. I, I I'm just taking it, it up a notch because I'm like, you could wait. We could play the waiting game, but then, you know. I didn't give that advice. Don't listen to me. Okay. okay. I, all I said was what I said. Okay. I said what I said. Rob is now taking it up. He's like, turn the car on. Hit the gas. Drive up onto the toilet. Like, no, you know? I didn't say drive okay, on Okay, Tokyo anything. Drift. You got that, I didn't that, say Vin put Diesel. it in drive. I'm just saying be comfortable. Be more comfortable than the person waiting on you. <laughs> the person waiting on you is outside, you know. So be more comfortable than that person. They also have a truck, though, that they can easily get inside and wait on. Right. Right. That's true. Y'all if they can, Tyrese if they can get in the I truck do. and they can leave. <laughs> and that's what you want. That's what you want. Right. I don't know. Do you like living in L.A.? I like some things about L.A. I don't love everything about L.A. I don't think anyone does. Yeah. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of people here. <laughs> Didn't you move from New York? Mm-hmm. So what do you mean? That's a lot of people in there constantly all up on you. Right. But all those people are like, they have like a, a similar mindset. That's true. That the, And they got to get to where they got to get to as fast as possible. Always. L.A. is just a lot of people. That's true. I, I'm glad I lived in New York first and then moved to L.A. Because I definitely right. took the hustle of New York to L.A. And I yeah. didn't get distracted by all the, you know. I quickly learned that, like, all the parties where people would go and schmooze and talk about their work, like, how corny that was. Like, I remember right. I went to one party and I, like, it was, like, when I first moved here. And I was like, oh, I've been working on this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I just realized, like, through their eyes that this was just, like, a weird way to converse with people. And it yeah. still happens to me to this day with other people. And I'm just looking like, oh, you sweet summer child. One day you'll learn, like, that social climate shit. Like, we just here to hang out like let's just hang let's talk about whatever yeah whatever i don't even tell people i'm an actor if they're not in the business like if they're yeah. in the business they'll know if not if i'm like in an uber if i'm anywhere with strangers or people mm -hmm. i'm just kicking it with they'll be like oh what do you do i'll be like oh you know i, I work in a, um accounting or i'll be yeah. like you know I, I do a lot of client facing stuff just like vague ass business words like okay. client facing Ki you client know? facing and <laughs> technically the client we are client facing is right now the people who are watching yes, on television and we're facing yeah, you. yeah 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 because like then if you ask and it's like obviously if you don't know who i am i'm not famous so like some people know who i am but like if you don't know who i am i'm not gonna tell you i'm an actor so then i have to sit here and list out my whole fucking imdb right. for you because they're like well, what they have i seen you and clearly you haven't seen me bitch why do i have to do this if you an accountant i'm not gonna be like pull up your linkedin where you work last ernest and young let's go all the way back to the past 10 years that's why do I have when to they do give that? you advice that's when they're like well have you tried calling tyler Perry? oh my god i was literally about to say have that. you tried it have you tried have you even tried it have you tried it? Have you even like looked to see? Oh man, let me go to the Perry section of the phone book. Have you even looked <laughs> to see if he was there? Yeah. My aunt used to, one of my aunties. I love you, aunties. But uh, when I first moved to LA, like when I would post photos on Instagram, she would comment in all of them and tag Oprah and Tyler Perry. And, Come on, like, all they're them. friends. One of them will see it and tell the <laughs> other like, one. Like y'all need to see my niece. Don't would, leave oh, one of them out. <laughs> Oprah and Tyler Perry, They're both together. of you. So yeah. One of their phone go go off. Right, <laughs> y'all. That should be the group chat. Me, Lacey, Oprah, Oprah Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. Yeah, we should send each we other have memes. So much in common. Come on, they would love it. <laughs> <laughs> they would love it. <laughs> I love when they come delayed like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, we'll fix it in post. Don't worry. <laughs> it's going to be real speedy. You know, that's that's how the people get it, real speedy. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Are you excited about the uh, Cowboy Carter album? You know I am. Like, yeah. you serious? Yeah. My issue is that, Beyonce, like, you know wages are low, like, inflation is high, mm -hmm. rent is high. Mm -hmm. How are you going to just keep making albums like this? Like, you know I want all the Cowboy Carter merch. You know I need to come to the concert and I, I get scammed again. Like, why would you do this to me? Like, we just, I literally just left Beyonce. You just, like, spin the block. I got hair products. I got another concert. She done yeah. put 50, 11 songs on it. Like, it looked like, you know how Chris Brown's albums always be, like, 90 songs? I was like, Beyonce, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, just, you were like, I'm putting out 70 songs. I like it, though. Oh, I love it. I'm going to put them all in my ears immediately tomorrow, and I can't wait. 
Also, like, we're from Texas. Like, I'm not from Texas. Well, I'm talking about me and Beyonce. Oh, okay. All that, right. was, that, was, <laughs> that was cute, though. <laughs> you gestured, and I was like, I'm, I'm not from Texas. I, Beyonce you know? is always in the yeah. room with us. <laughs> She's always here. She's omnipresent. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I forgot. So I, was talking to I her. forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot. Oh, I didn't see you there, Beyonce. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot. She forgives you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a lot of Texas culture, rodeo culture, mm-hmm. like, and also like black people have such a huge instrumental part in country music. You know, you talk about Chuck Berry, you talk about like all the greats who, you know, and I like that she has the non problematic whites on this. She got Dolly on it, she mm-hmm. got Woody on it. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't wait to hear. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Uh, I really loved Act One. Mm-hmm. And. You know, I love the intentionality of it. I love, like, a lot of the the choices that were on there. And, like, it's, you know, still, like, sounds amazing. Um, But I love that it's so connected. And she, like, she has a cowboy hat on. And -hmm. she was on a horse. She left a concert on the horse. The disco horse. Now she's coming back with like a a real horse. And it's like, ooh, I can't wait to see how like act one, act two, and act three are all interconnected. I've I've seen people with theories that energy is connected to Texas Hold'em. Yeah. I'm like excited to see like if it's all like like layered and, and similar and stuff. And yeah. So we're all hoping Act Three is gonna be rock and roll. Like yeah. everyone's really hoping. Because I mean, you know, she had um, "Let It Be." You just gotta let yeah, it be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that song. Right. Um, and that was with who? Um, there's a very famous rock musician that's on that song, and I don't know why his name is like. Is it a? Uh, is it a? Uh, was that Diplo? No, it's a rock musician. Um, you will know it as soon as you see who it is. It's don't hurt you. Jack White. Jack White, yeah. Jack yeah. White, yeah. And it's like, what Who a Who moved to Nashville. Which I love. Which yeah. is like a, a you know, country music yeah. town. Yeah. Like ate it up. Yeah. Also, who like Beyonce is the only person I feel like who can call anybody for a feature. And they'd be like, hold on. <laughs> right. I gotta leave my kids here. Can you watch them? <laughs> like, yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> Julius is here to take me to Beyonce. I gotta go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know this is my kids recital. They they'll be they got plenty of time in their life. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> like I'm tired of people being upset with her for exploring other genres. We've had like 25 years of Beyonce like doing you know R&B go listen to that if you don't want it you know what I'm saying like I'm just like let her explore let her do other things like it's always been there like Irreplaceable is basically a country song I mean, daddy lessons. She was like yeah. telling us where she was going to go. But also people forget that like, or not forget, but I don't think people realize like Beyonce sounds like Beyonce on every type of song. Like any genre okay. she exploits, she still sounds like Beyonce. So if yeah. you like Beyonce's voice, you're still, and maybe you need to just broaden your horizons, baby boo. It's not our fault that you're pigeonholed and like your mind is closed. Like open it up. Mm-hmm. And, and beyond that, like Beyonce did, I feel like she honestly did the country version, like this whole kind of like homage to Texas. One, because she's from Texas. Two, she's obviously flirted with doing this for a while yeah. but three because the cmas did her so dirty when she performed with the dixie chicks and even when she announced cowboy carter she makes a nod to like going into a space a country space and not feeling welcome she's talking about the cmas and the one thing you don't want to do with a virgo is piss them off she was like oh bet i can't do that oh, okay cool i'm gonna make a whole motherfucking album but i'm gonna get on the charts and put my foot on all y'all rednecks who on top now and she did it she did it immediately <laughs> They took her performance off the CMT website. Yeah, because like, white people love to steal something and forget where it came from. Like, maybe yeah. that wasn't your culture, sweetie. You got that from yeah. us. We raised you. We breastfed you. We made you, especially in Texas. Like, be for real. So, you know, they can stay mad and salty, but she, now she's going to eat them up in their own platform. She's like, I'm going to take your money from you just for fun. I don't even need it. I like it. <laughs> I love it. I That's like my it. kind of petty. Yeah. I did a live uh, a radio show this morning, and... I didn't realize that, like, the fan base, like, a lot of them were really nice, but, like, it's, like, they tagged me 
on Instagram and then they did a collaboration. So sometimes when you do that, like you can't turn off certain notifications. Right. You have to go figure it out. So my phone is just being inundated currently still with just like the worst Karen's weirdo, like hating ass white people. Mm. Like, oh, she talks too fast or oh, she's this. Or, oh, she's that. I'm like, who opened the door to this? Like this right. fan base. Like what is y'all's problem? And then one lady, like, cause I'm in a great mood and I don't mind the internet. Like I don't welcome it, but like I don't get as sensitive about it now because I'm like, this is a uh, occupational hazard. I signed up to be a public figure. People are gonna sad and mad and they're broke and I get it. Like the, the economy's terrible right now and you're depressed. You don't want to fix yourself, so you gonna get on the internet. You gonna throw it at a black woman. I get it. So it doesn't hurt me as much. So there was one woman who was like. I, I wish you would stop having these nobodies come on the show. And I clicked on her page. And there's a lot of worse stuff. But for this one, I was like, let me have some fun. I clicked on her page. Baby, nobody knows who you are, Lauren. And and so then I clicked back <laughs> on the comment. And I clicked underneath and I said, hey, I don't know if you know, but I'm tagged in this. And while many people may not know you, Lauren, I promise you, sweetheart, one day you will know me. And then I just put a little heart emoji. I was like, give it time. Oh like, wow, Lauren! You're not gonna be able to close your eyes at night without seeing my fucking face. I can't wait. Wow, that's, how, that's the kind of petty I am. So when Beyonce did that shit and was like, I felt very unwelcomed in that country space. So then I decided that I was going to take it all over. <laughs> like, yeah, that I was going to have it. <laughs> like, what you did? Yeah, yeah. Man, I I I like when Beyonce's Texas uh, accent comes out. I do too. She doesn't talk to us anymore. Mm-mm, like she don't she, talk to us. Like when she did that T-Mobile, we were like, this is the most Beyonce has talked to us in like 10 years or variety. Right, right. Like, <laughs> it was like, she really talking, talking. We ain't heard her talk. Put out a song during the Super Bowl. And had everybody phone jammed up. We all mm-hmm, over here like trying mm-hmm. to get on the site. Like, And then she's sitting in the booth all smug and shit, knowing Right, knowing right, that right. we are struggling, we are fighting for our lives. Yeah. And she's yeah. sitting in her hat just like, <laughs> like really Beyonce yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so you're excited are you gonna go to the concert if there's a concert I, w- I would probably try to go to the concert for sure are you yeah. confident this time that she she's gonna do the videography and you can like take more videos of yourself yes yes I think it will be documented <laughs> I think that you know, whatever visual we get for uh for the um act three mm-hmm. is the one they're gonna treat it like they tr- treated uh Lord of the Rings Return of the King and it she's gonna get all the nominations and everything because then people will actually get to consume the other two and see all the work and everything that went into it. Cause I was like, how did this not get nominated for something? I never seen editing like that. They got to take all these different concerts and put them together. How, like, did y'all not see it? Did y'all not see it? Because it was in the theater. Well, I mean, there were people who, um, I mean, I know you're talking about, like, the Academy, but there were people who um, were interviewed for the Grammys, like, blind item, right? Mm-hmm. And they were like, well, what what discourages you against voting? You know, Beyonce's lost album of the year, like, four times to, yeah. like, whack-ass week. Like, when she lost to Beck, I said, please get out of my face. Nobody listened to that Beck album. And I love Beck, okay? I love We Got a Time Bomb, Tick, Tick, nah, 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 nah. But, like, nah, nah, nah to this album winning over Beyonce. Like, y'all playing in my face. Harry Styles, love. love him down. Still playing in my face. Even Adele got up there and was like, why are you guys playing in her face? Like, thank you so yeah. much for the award, but you know it's not mine. <laughs> like, like everybody yeah. knows. So other people who were voting the Grammys were like, well, she she wins too much, and she, she wins all the time. It's just haters. Like, she has now amassed so many haters who are on the voting block that right. that is why it's happening. And she doesn't win in the categories that they vote in. She mm-hmm. wins in the categories that other people vote in. So she's winning over there. You're basically saying that, like, all these black people are, you know, wrong. All these black people are, are inferior. You know, it's it's kind of messed up that, like, you know, the whole thing about the Beck album was like, he did it all by himself. And it's and? like, so he's better than these 100 people over here? Like, like. What are you saying? What are you saying? Well, that's all they can do and is say that, oh, she, she didn't do it by herself. But I'm like, okay, here's another point. She is a music scholar. She's a music genius. And yeah. she has an ear that you don't. To be able to curate that much, like, that is an artistry in and of itself. And people right. like to act like Michael Jackson wasn't interpolating music left and right. People are always taking influence from things. And he didn't take as many dings. Mike needed 
it a shot right there. But, it's not a you know, shot. I feel you. That's yeah. not a shot. I'm saying no. that they didn't take his ducats away for it. I don't blame anybody that was putting food on the table as a kid for not <laughs> being a musician and knowing that music, music and music shit. theory because they was out there getting paid to make music Rob, already. I'm, Rob, I'm saying I'm putting Michael and Beyonce together. I'm saying me that, too. That's no, that applies to both of them. But we, also, that's I'm trying to be. Music. I'm trying to argue with you okay we are we're arguing yeah, together we, I'm, I'm like, not i'm not against you i'm saying hey let's let's not take away from mike or 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 you know what i'm saying people are always trying to move the goalposts because that's what people people like you know james baldwin said everybody needs a nigga right so it's like mm -hmm. everybody needs somebody to look down on mm -hmm. so if you get to a certain space where you're all sharing the table everyone's still moving the goalposts especially with white supremacy to try to seem like they have some you know grandiose opinion or they have some more class or they have more information than somebody else so it's like right. when somebody has ate you the fuck up like that then where are you gonna move to oh well you don't do it all by yourself it's like what do you do actually what do right, you do? Right, you don't vote for somebody because you feel like they win too much. It's crazy. That's a hater. Like it's I've crazy. Never, but honestly, you're saying though, everyone else is wrong. Everyone else is wrong. That's not what they're saying. They're saying that I'm a hater. And honestly, right. I kind of have a penchant for haters. I, I I implore you to get a hater job. You know, get in the IRS, start pocket watching. You know, be a meter maid. Get out there giving parking tickets. Get a hater profession right. to channel your hate. But. So I can't lie. A hater coming out, I wish they had stood on business and said their name. Then having, I would have been like, I love you for being a hater and standing on it. But anonymous hater, you weak. Having anonymous vocal haters is kind of a flex. Oh, truly. It's kind of a flex. you're scared. Yeah. No one else could come up to you and be like, well, you didn't win. Like, yeah, I have documentation of bias. Do you? Did they say they they don't? Did you win too much? I didn't think so. I bet you every, there's a. <laughs> I bet you every hater who was talking about Beyonce has a photo with her. I bet you they were standing in line at them commercial breaks trying to get that photo with her too. They've used her name for clout for sure. For sure. For sure. That was my favorite part of watching the Grammys was like, I felt so bad for our sister Beyonce Giselle because every commercial break or anything, there was a line that would just form at Beyonce's table and then Beyonce right. would just have to get up and just smile as people were like, hey Beyonce, hey Beyonce, it's me. Hey yeah. Beyonce, you remember me? I used to do, um like when you had the pantyhose and I, had, I brought them to you, that's me. Let's get a picture. Like, <laughs> right, right. I know. I understand why she don't go nowhere no more. I get it. Uh, yeah, we okay. So if you if you were in the same space as Beyonce, how would you conduct yourself? I've been in the same space as Beyonce. Uh, flex, <laughs> okay, <laughs> multiple times. And what did you do? She spoke to us. I mean, we acted a fool. I was right. young. One time, it was the 4040 Club back when they were really, like, pushing it. This is when I lived in New York. So okay. I was, like, maybe 21. Okay. And um, I remember we had, like, kind of uh, hustled our way into the VIP section, and Beyonce was walking through the front door. There's a back door. There's back rooms. There's all types of situations in the back that we would, like, be in and stuff. So you don't yeah. have to go through the front. So if she walks through the front, it's just to get publicity for the club, for Bay, right? Mm -hmm. So she just come, like, when I mean Bay, I mean her Bay, not Beyonce. Right. Be. So she comes in, and I just see people in our section take off running. And we were like, with famous people, we were like, what fuck about y'all? Like, I saw my friend take off running. I didn't know why she was running, but you know the black people rule. Somebody runs, you run in the same direction, you mm -hmm. ask questions when you get there. Like, why was we running? Are we safe now? What happened? Yeah. So, so we run, and when we get to where we're running to, there's Beyonce. And we were like, <gasps> like we're breathing your air and she was like hey y'all i don't want to take any pictures today i look kind of crazy but hey so i guess it was two separate occasions because one okay. time she walked in four photos and this time she was just in like in the back with us yeah, and she was like yeah. i look crazy but hey and we we're like hi beyonce oh wow yeah she didn't look crazy at all but but i'm glad that she got a break from photos <laughs> yeah no so yeah I, I mean i think i would be a little bit more composed now i was quite young then but Got you, got you. What if she knew who you were? What if she was like, "Hey"? I mean, I would, I would faint. I mean, that recently happened to <laughs> uh, Crystal and Kid Fury, and they made a whole episode Man. about it. it was so great. Yeah, I hope to one day, you know, meet Beyonce. I don't need her to know who I am, but like, just really like have a little chat. I would be got cool. You. I could, I got could stand you. up and breathe through my nose now and like really center myself. Yeah, I would be fine. How would you be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I really don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't think I'm gonna do anything too crazy, but you know, 
I'm, I'm not confident in the way you said that. I don't think I'm going to do anything too crazy. I will be normal, like a normal <laughs> amount of crazy. Like, like if you ever seen, you know, like when when people, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to be like excited. Yeah, of course. I am going to be excited. I, I, I am going to be excited, you know. Rob, yeah. you're such a I came in dude, late. Though. I came in late to Beyonce, so I can't even be like held her down from day one. You know, I was I was out here messing with the field at the time. You okay, know? who was on the roster when it wasn't Beyonce? Uh, it was everybody. It was the field. You know, it was it was Keisha Cole. It was Ashanti. Oh, yes. It Keisha was Keisha Cole makes music uh, for you women know, who date men who cheat on them. A Marie. It was uh, you know. Oh, I love uh, Marie. Yeah, it was it was it was the whole the whole field. Khalees, you know, There's like nothing wrong with that. You could keep them yeah, all. Yeah. So, but then post lemonade, it's been like, all right. You was like, okay, I'm we here in now. another league now. You know, the visuals is all connecting. It's a whole body of work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here. It's making me feel like, all right, I got to get myself together. I need to, you know what I'm saying? I need to, yeah. So it wasn't even self-titled when it, like, dropped in the middle of the night and nobody knew. I didn't trust uh, streaming. I didn't believe (laughs) in it. I didn't sign up. (laughs) You had your foil foil on your head. And, like, I couldn't physically get it. And people just had it before I had it. And I was hating. (laughs) And, like, they had capabilities to watch videos that I couldn't see. So, honestly, (laughs) self-titled, around that time, I was kind of rooting against it because... It was just like more convenient for other people than it was for me, and I didn't really have. Did you have a flip phone or something? I'm I'm so confused. I had an iPhone. I that ten dollars a month. I was oh. like, y'all just I can't just let y'all take it when you need it. Okay. Yeah, I much rather just take my ten dollars, buy it, put it on my iPod, and listen to it like that. At that time. I understand. I understand yeah. that you, when you can't let them take it, the, yeah, the, whatever, because they yeah. always take it at the wrong time. I'm not saying I don't have 10 now. I'm just not sure I'm going to always have 10. <laughs> I I got 10 right now. Don't try me now. <laughs> like, I'm I'm functional. I'm breathing. I'm eating. You know what I'm no, saying? I'm, I'm putting gas well. in my car. But at the same time, who's to say what's going to happen a couple months from now? <laughs> so none of your bills are on auto pay. At that time, when when self title <laughs> no, came out, yes. nothing was auto nothing. <laughs> I I was praying every time I cranked the automobile at that time, <laughs> like auto pay. No, nothing was automatic. You you got it. If I got it, you got it. I love it. I, <laughs> listen, I love it because like Apple also. I feel like they used to take the money out at random times. Like they weren't right. just like a first and the fifteenth girl. Right. They'd be like it's like the ninth. It was and like, like based off it. of when you hit that button. And I was never like, all right, this is a you know, I'm on the fifteenth. I'm gonna hit the button. Like I was just like, yeah. You're so right. And that's a problem. Like, y'all got to just do regular billing cycles because Apple just be popping up all willy-nilly like, hey, we took some. We took a little sum for that app. Right. We took a little. And also, the apps don't charge at the same time. It's not like you get one Apple bill, which I think I'm like, I got to start reading into what y'all charging for because I feel like y'all charge me so many times so y'all can just throw in like an extra $4. Right. Like, who would know? You getting a little a la carte with the Apple. <laughs> And it's like, yeah, no, send me one Apple bill so I could see how much a I'm really bill. spending a month. But they're like, oh, yeah, here, you know, this uh, this app charges. Right. Yeah, you want this app to, to track you? Like, is that what I'm paying for to be tracked? It charged on the 17th. This one yeah. charged on the 6th. This other one over here charged on the 3rd and a half. That mm-hmm, mean we get it at mm-hmm. midnight? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Nah, Apple, be, stop billing me on the 3rd and a half. That's not a thing. <laughs> what's your um? What's your favorite uh? Like, do you do you use a music service? I I mean, we're in streaming and podcasts, so like, yeah, yeah. I, for all intents and purposes, I use them all. You use them all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I actually do. Like, I stream different things, different places. Like gotcha. sometimes I'm on SoundCloud. Sometimes I'm on um. Sirius, Spotify, Apple. Got you, got you. Apple normally in my car. Okay, okay. Because it's just like the quickest like link up to it. But I use Spotify too. If you had the ox, what what song you playing? Oh, okay. So I have ADHD, so I hyperfixate on things. Okay. And so right now I've been playing um, Honey Bee. Honey uh, Bee. By, um, it's like something and it's like orchestra something anonymous orchestra something like that 
Unknown Mortal Orchestra. I've been playing Honey Beyond Repeat. And then there's also um, the song by Hayes By. Um, it's called You Make Me Feel. The song by Hayes By. Put in Hayes, H-A-Z-E. Okay. And then put in By, like B-Y. Mm-hmm. And then do you see like... Um, Is there a space? You make me... No, there's no space. Okay. Okay, you see them black people? L- do the slowed down one. It should be two. I can't see your computer, though. I don't know. Yeah, you got it. Hold on. This... I'm almost to be like, give me a computer. <laughs> yeah. I think this is it. Yeah, so those two songs, they're very different, but they've been on repeat. No. No, this isn't it. <laughs> oh, my God. No, that's not it. Oh, my God. If I was listening to that on repeat, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a murderer. No. <laughs> Tom, turn it off, Rob. That's not what I was listening to. Wait. This is what you told me. I'm just, no, you're not. You're not putting it in right. Okay. <laughs> now I have to make sure. No. What are you putting in? H-A-Z-E-B-Y. I cannot believe this. That is not what it is, and you are killing me right now. I have to pull it up. So it's oh, by Hayes. My bad. That's my fault. <laughs> See? See? Not I didn't know how to spell <laughs> Hayes. If anyone knows how to spell Hayes, it's me. Right. What's the song? Rob Hayes, yeah. <laughs> it's called Feel Good, the slowed down version. And then the other one is Honey Bee by Unknown Mortal Orchestra. They're Got very you. different, but. Uh, this is. Okay. It's giving me like house jersey club. Gotcha. Wait for it. You gotta wait for the beat to drop. Okay. You gonna change my mind. Those hard eyes. Here we go. You run away. Another day. Are you are you in by haze? <laughs> no, <laughs> I've had that before. I've had people like, and then no. you know, you be like, all right, you, you got know one how in. To make me feel good. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. You know how to make me feel good. Yeah, and there's like a sped up version. They're both great, and then the other one is Honey Bee, and I love Honey Bee because okay. sometimes it's like my sad song, and sometimes it's my happy song. Mm. Yeah. I have those. I have those. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Right now it's in happy mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't listen to sad music when I'm sad. Like that doesn't work for me. Like see people play their sad song and I'd be like, damn, you'd be just you'd be really crying, huh? You ain't never but, just put on broken hearted one time when you was broken hearted? Nah. <laughs> like I'd be crying to like church girl. Church girl? Yeah, I had oh. to, I had to um drive to USD Keck like after I had I had three surgeries last year for fibroids and they found like a little spot on my liver. So they had to go like I had to get tested for like cancer and like all this stuff and get MRIs and stuff. And so when I was driving back to USC Keck to like get my like cancer results last year, um, I was playing Church Girl. And the beginning is like so kind of like, you know, I've been up, I've been down. Yeah. It's like very like so like I start crying right when it gets to now drop it like a thought and drop it like so I'm like <laughs> sobbing yeah. and it's just like drop it like church girl I'm like, yeah. I'm like you can call me daddy if you want to you can be my daddy if you want to yeah it was but that's uh, what I, so I cry to weird things <laughs> no that makes I mean it makes sense it makes sense it really took me to like when I saw the like churchy iconography and mm-hmm. she came out and everything and then like I just like kind of took in like like the people that were around me and like what they've been through and what mm-hmm. they you know like and then it kind of put in perspective like like this song what it is about and what it what it means and it just made me feel like dang I don't you know I I should I should think about other people's struggle more I should think about other you know how how other people are existing in this world outside of like myself yeah. you know because queer folks have had a huge and I'm place at a in concert. the church <laughs> right right i'm thinking like i'm thinking that with the henny in my head 
<laughs> you're having an existential right, moment. Right. Like people are throwing ass next to you and you're like, wow, you know, collective everyone lives a different life, but we're on the same planet. And then the next to you is someone just like aggressively throwing ass. Right. Yes. Right. But no, queer people have, such, have had such a huge influence on the church spaces for so long and then mm-hmm, they've been shunned mm-hmm. by churches. I yeah. luckily I grew up in Texas with like some good pastors. I had one Reverend Joshua, I remember you know, the choir directors are usually for the girls, like if you got a good choir, okay? And I remember a choir director that we had had passed away and some people in the congregation didn't want pastor our pastor to give the funeral. Mind you, what? he's been giving them joy, directing the choir, right. choir all these years. You want him years. to sing at your funeral. Right. But then when yeah. it's time for his, you, he can't have it properly. And so he actually got up in the pulpit and he told the church off about it. And I thought Man. that was one of the most beautiful things I saw as a kid. Fire, that he yeah. really drugged them to hell and back. And I was like, I yeah. know that's right. But so, yeah, like a lot of queer people have been kicked out of the church, cast away. And it's like they still love God. So, like, that's why I love that song so much. Yeah. Sometimes if you get deep. Yeah. Wait, I have to know before we move. What's your sad song? My sad song? Uh Yeah, I want to hear a piece of it now. And and I want to I want you to get it wrong first. I want you to play System of a Down. <laughs> no. <laughs> Cause, cause, yeah, the way I teed that up with like I am listening to it no. on repeat. <laughs> I think I I think Rob did that to me on purpose. No. He get his licks back today. What? No. <laughs> Rob, those aren't even convincing. What? No. Mm-mm. No. This one of them. This how this how men used to have to express themselves emotionally. Is this Otis Redding? Sam Cook? No, David Ruffin. Ra- oh, right. It is David Ruffin. It's the Temptations. I know. Oh, my God. I have to know that. I, I can't. Oh, David. Ain't nobody come to see you, Otis. This is sad for you? Yeah, I love this song. I, I've never thought of it as a song. I love it. See, I just said my sad song. He songs wants it to rain so he could cry. Yeah, I know. But a lot of sad songs are upbeat, and so you're like, la la la. Like, you remember? Okay. Cause crying. <laughs> that was him crying in the song. He was crying in the song. Cause crying. Who? That, that was up. the cry. The cry can he can only cry when it rains because he a man. <laughs> I can't cry out here when it's sun outside. Y'all put yourself in I gotta prison. go check the mail in the rain. That's the only time that I can cry. <laughs> and then when you see David Ruffin every time, like as a solo act, go watch him on YouTube. He go out there and he starts screeching. He start like literally like remember to cry. Remember that. Like he gets out there, whoo, like just off the rip. Off the rip, start with the cry. Go watch Summer of Soul. He out there, oh, great he that. on his cry first, song second. Like, come on, man. That's beautiful. Yeah. You can cry anytime you want, Rob, but that is very beautiful. <laughs> I know, because, you know, like like we in 2024, David Ruffin really didn't have that. He could only You're really, right. you know what I'm saying? So much that they made a song about it. Good. Like someone felt comfortable enough to be like, oh, this is a single. Like other, other dudes going to hear this and be like, I'm going to buy that, but I'm not going to say anything about it. That's why they're hiding it in such an upbeat, you know, situation yeah. and a metaphor. They're like, all, the bo- all, the- all my homeboys cry to David Ruffin in their home in the dark when nobody can see them. But right. now you can. I hope y'all feel a little less free from the prison that you created for yourselves called the patriarchy. Right, right. But you know what? That brings me to an interesting thought. Like, because that is such an upbeat song, but the reality of it is so sad. You remember that song that was like, la, da, dee, da, da, da. Yeah. yeah, and that's about a homeless lady. Yeah, and well, she says that she's but, homeless. But we're like, still like she's <laughs> homeless. She's home. Like we're dancing yeah. so hard yeah. to it. It's like, yeah, don't don't spin yourself too fast. <laughs> yeah, it's people. It's homeless people out here. Okay, but we're don't, dancing don't, to it in the yeah, club. Yeah, jam. But just know when you walk outside, 
It's homeless people outside, okay? Robert, I don't think people are like you were at don't, the Beyonce Don't concert. give all the money in the tip jar because you're going to have it. to pass out some dollars <laughs> when you walk outside. La da dee, da da da, la da dee. Just know they out there. Okay, why y'all out here spending all this money? You know, keep some in your pocket. Rob, you're the. I feel like you're the only one. <laughs> I feel like now I'm at the Beyonce concert when you had your moment of like everyone else's lives. You were like, she's homeless, y'all. Make sure you keep she's some homeless. cash for her. Yeah, I was in the club like, she's homeless. She's like, why? Snap them pockets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Lacey, thanks so much for coming on the Inconsistent Podcast with Rob Hayes. Is there anything you would like to tell the people? Yes. First of all, thank you for having me, Rob. Oh, thanks for coming through. Uh, you're the best. And, um, yeah, if you want to listen to my podcast, Scam Goddess, it's a comedy show all about robbery, fraud, and those who practice it. You can also pre-order my book, Scam Goddess. Just put it in the little Google so you can pre-order anywhere. Help me scam the bestseller list. It's out September 10th, 2024. Um, it's a combination of memoirs slash my favorite scams. So um, each episode, or each chapter is about like my romance life, but then also about romance scams. You know what I mean? Okay. And how I've been scammed or body scams or how I work for several drug fronts. You can learn a lot about me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Author. <laughs> <laughs> you need to record that and then have it as a button. <laughs> Author. Author. <laughs> and then, yeah, you can follow me at D I V A L A C I D V L A C on all platforms. All right. Oh, we got a clip on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been the Inconsistent Podcast with Rob Hayes. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys go out, catch all the things fronting on uh, all your DSPs, YouTube, and all that. Uh, yeah. You know the dance yet? I don't know the dance, but I haven't seen it in a while either. <sighs> we just got to do the electric slide to it because, baby boo, I can't learn all them steps they doing on TikTok. <laughs>